Hey, what's going on everyone? Marcus Philly here with Functional Bodybuilding, and I wanna talk about incline bench pressing. Why do we use incline bench pressing? Well, for me, one of the reasons that I like to bring in incline bench pressing is that anytime I'm looking at a specific movement pattern or a specific joint, I like to think about how can we train this particular movement pattern or joint through a variety of different angles. Pressing horizontally and pressing vertically, they challenge very different muscle groups. They require a different amount of stability and control at the shoulder, at the shoulder blade, and then every angle in between there will actually demand a slightly different amount of stability and use your muscles in a different way. So as is a big theme with functional bodybuilding, we're looking at ways to train for the long haul. If you're always training the same movement patterns over and over again, you will plateau, you might see overuse injuries, and you might just get bored. So having variation in your training can mean the simple change of the angle that you're pressing. So that's one of the reasons why we use the incline bench. The other reason I like the incline bench for pressing is that it does challenge your shoulder through a larger range of motion. And when we're looking to build length and strength at a joint, it's helpful to have different tools and different approaches for getting longer ranges of motion as we're pressing. So let's talk about maybe what do you do if you do not have an incline bench. I'm fortunate to have a few incline benches here at the gym, and if you are working out at a gym that doesn't have an incline bench, you might be thinking, well, how do, I, how do I recreate this? Is it even worth it? I see incline bench in the program. I'll just use my flat bench, but I encourage you to use this hack, okay? So here's my incline bench. Here's my flat bench. How could I get something similar? Well, you can always prop this up on a box. You could layer on multiple weight plates underneath it. And if it starts to get quite high, let's say I put another box and now my incline is at this height, you might just wanna ensure that you uh, secure the bottom foot of the bench with a heavy weight plate or a heavy dumbbell so it doesn't slide out from underneath you if you have somewhat of a slick floor. But getting this set up can mimic the same angle. You might not be able to get up as high as a bench like this, but even having these different angles to press at that are slightly lower can give you some of the benefits of in incline pressing. Now, how much angle is appropriate? Well, when I call for an incline bench press, it doesn't mean a standard 45 degrees or 30 degrees. I think the variability and the variation in angles of pressing is perhaps the best and most important part of incline benching. Some days I like to incline bench or incline press at a very high angle. Sometimes I like to go at a slightly lower angle and even lower. And one of the challenges with traditional benches that have settings is that there's fixed settings on there. Whereas in this situation, I can put a one inch plate, a two inch plate, a three inch plate, and I can create a whole variety of different angles to press at. Now, some movement cues when I'm actually doing the incline press. Something to think about is this angle between my torso and my upper arm, that is different every angle that I press at. If I go more vertical with my angle, that angle becomes a lot bigger on this angle of incline pressing. And so when I said we can build more range in the press by using a variety of different incline bench angles, that's what I meant. If I, in, if I increase or I bring this, the back of my bench up, then that's gonna create a much larger angle here. So much so that I could eventually get up to a full vertical press and then everything in between. When I press in an incline bench, and this is the same thing when I'm doing a flat bench, I'm often thinking about how far can I pull that dumbbell down my side in a safe, pain-free position for my shoulder. So I'm pain-free, I've got this dumbbell all the way past the level of my chest and my shoulder. Whereas if I were to press with a pronated grip, I would run into my chest at about here. If I turn it into a neutral position, I can get extra range of motion. 
So that is oftentimes the pressing position that I prefer when you're doing incline pressing so that you can get a deep range of motion at this position and you can get this large angle at the top to really make your upper arm work through a long range of motion. So I hope those tips and I hope that explanation of the incline bench helps you understand why it's worth going through the trouble of propping up your bench onto a box or onto some plates so that you can vary the angle of pressing. Take care.